What's up guys, welcome back to IT Security Labs and in this video we're going to exploit BIP. BIP is a very easy Linux machine on Hack the Box where people go and practice and learn penetration testing. So in this video I'm going to show you how to exploit this machine and end up with root and also get the two flags user.txt and root.txt. So it says it's easy and this is my fifth machine in my series in my path to getting OSCP certified and I'm exploiting all these machines that are here and so far I've started with the easy ones and they really don't take long and you will see a pattern from my exploitation here so without wasting time let's go ahead and start uh, finding out what what's going on on our machine so the first thing that we need to do is let's open our terminal here And we like to run our nmap scan, just like in any other videos that I run. So let me show you quickly. I'm, I've become very efficient here where I have my scans pre-written and I know exactly what I'm doing. Then just hit enter. And this is just the default script scan, finding for open ports, outputting to a folder called nmap. And of course, I already did this for us, so let's let me end this so that I can show you. As you can see here, our nmap scan produced a lot of results. I mean, that's that's a lot of results we have to go through, and I'm trying to train myself to go through every single of these results one by one when I get stuck, so I can actually uh, learn to enumerate even further. So we face right off the bat, we see that we have TCP uh tw port 22 ssh so this is a version of ssh that we have so i would like to see whether there's any vulnerabilities there but i don't think there is uh, then we have port 25 so we have ma a mail server running and we have uh, http and it looks like it does redirect people to https so let's find out what this is all about so when we open the link to 10.10.10.7 we see that we have elastics um i used to be a systems administrator at a place where i used elastics so i kind of smiled when i saw this this is a pbx server that usually comes with a crm system tied to it and it's pretty cool for call centers the only thing that i wasn't happy about is i couldn't see any version information on this page so that's not ideal but at least i know what elastics is and if you don't know just search for elastics see it's a unified pbx system and it looks like they're working with 3cx and this this used to be my life every day uh working on these systems so we can try uh to see what elastics default usernames and passwords are but while that is happening in the back i want to run it Durbuster to see if I can find um, if there's any other directories including the CRM that might be tied to this so but let's look up the Elastic's default username and password default passwords let's see what they say here there they are so it looks like we're going to try admin polacento admin 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 password <laughs> admin admin all these um uh, passwords that we can try from the forums these are the correct ones they don't seem to work when i tried them so we go back to our terminal And over here, let me cancel my end map here. As you can see, it, it does take a long time. So we see that uh, we have port 22. That is any help. We have a mail server that's running. Let's start our Durbuster. We can just start our Durbuster by typing Durbuster here. As you can see, it should launch very quickly. And our URL is HTTPS 
10.10.10.7. I understand this might take a long time and let's browse for a file to use. Word list and let's use derb big dot text. Uh, yeah, select list and let's start. This, this will take a long time. I tried this earlier. It does take quite a long time. But so it looks like my first one should have completed as a VPN. Where did the first one go? Oh, there we go. So, okay, so this is the first one, it's still going. <laughs> so that's the trouble with this. Uh, scans i mean they take forever so let's see uh yeah we're still in themes so it's still running while it's running it gives me time to go and to poke around with these things so i know what elastic search is i mean elastics is i know uh the default credentials don't work so the next thing that i do is i just try to find hopefully there is a vulnerability for elastics while my Durbust is running. <laughs> I should have run this earlier. So let's just search for Elastic's X vulnerabilities. Uh, that wasn't correct spelling, but there is a remote, a local file inclusion. Yeah, so local file inclusion exploits are very simple. So these are the ones that you can throw at a machine see if it if it works if it doesn't you move on you don't think twice and um if you're interested in knowing what a local file inclusion is there's this wonderful document that i have here this is from org, and they they do explain that it's a it's just an vulnerability that usually allows an attacker to use a dynamic file inclusion mechanism that is usually included included in an application and for the most case what I found, especially like on um, Mr. Robot, the machine, is we like to find more information. That's what we're doing. We're not trying to do a denial of service. Maybe sometimes if, if I can, I get cross-site scripting or some code ex execution. But it's also great for sensitive information disclosure. So now that we know what that is, let's come back. We found one that allows us, uh, it's a local file inclusion. And this explains what it does. And it looks like, even though our Durbuster is not done, we have a CRM here. Remember earlier I said uh, Elastic PBX systems usually come with a CRM. Looks like we're using VTiger. So before I even run this, let me go and find uh, what's on VTiger. There we go. Okay, so we do have a VTiger CRM here. And we can also look up the default credentials for this. But I think that would be too easy for them to give us that. So we know from just looking up the exploit that sometimes our CRM comes with VTiger. That's not the same CRM that I used to use. So if I try to exploit using that and go back here, let's remove VTiger. That's how you use the Local on file inclusion. Okay. So if I enter, and sure enough, look at that. That is a trove of information. So this is the third result. Local on file inclusion allows us to actually view a lot of information. So to sort this, so it makes a lot of sense. If you say view page source, look at how nice that looks like. So let's spend some time here looking. We have some database configuration information. It's just like letting us know. AMP DB host, host name. So every time we see AMPD, there's something to do with a name. APD name, name of the database. We have a username here. Password. So user is asterisk. 
and we just get a password like just like that and we also get another password here oh we even have mysql login information this is just this is just too easy guys this is just way too easy and it looks like the password keeps repeating over and over again this person is using the same password for everything they can be so ridiculous and stupid to use the same password for root for ssh would they let's throw this password everywhere we can <laughs> because seriously this is just uh ridiculous so let's go to i need to say admin and we copied and pasted the password from uh here this thing and i know asterisk um username is always or almost always supposed to start with admin so this is maybe where my little experience helps me because i kind of know this application a little bit and if we do submit don't save and sure enough this person used the same password that they have there if i can get into here with the same password what's to stop me from trying the same password for root if i get in as root i'm just going to end this machine right here because it's just too ridiculous so it's ssh ssh root at 10.10.10.7 and what's my password i'm going to paste that let's see here this is my moment of truth okay guys this is ridiculous um I'm pretty sure there are better ways to get into these machines than reusing the same password for everything. Seriously, so let's just do the... <laughs> okay, so I was really expecting something more interesting. Just the fact that we just reuse the same password for everything and we are root right now is a little disappointing. So <laughs> maybe uh, let's uh, after this, I'll look up if there's a Metasploit uh, for this as well because I'm pretty sure there is but let's just find our flags anyway cd funnies catch user dot text it's always in there I don't want to waste any time okay then cat root the text Okay, that was that was just ridiculous. So let's exit. That was sad. I was expecting to have more fun poking around with elastics and trying to see if there's other things I can exploit here. I'm pretty sure there are better ways. A lot of people are not going to get guess the credentials like I did. But um I don't think it's guessing when you see the same password being used over and over again. Like here. You see this password right here? If we copy that and search for it, seriously, it was mentioned four times. Any any normal person would think this person is re reusing this. Of course, this is an exploit that we can use in Metasploit, so I'm not going to even uh, try that. But it's very simple. We can actually just use whatever the name of this exploit specify the host and run and from there maybe you can escalate your privileges depending on where you start but i'm just turned off by this machine i'm going to move on to a different one and guys that was it sometimes these machines are too easy remember to like and subscribe uh, i will be posting more of these videos and um, i'm hoping the ones that I'll be posting in the future will be more exciting. So like and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.